Hello friends! We all know the basics of the food chain. Plants get their nutrients from sunlight, animals eat plants, and carnivores eat other animals. However, even here there are exceptions. There are predatory plants that lure animals into their traps and then eat them. It's mostly insects, but snails, lizards, and even small mammals can also fall prey to them. In today's video, you will see plants that eat animals and learn about other unusual flora. This small carnivorous plant is famous. The Venus flytrap is capable of capturing live insects by using its modified leaves as traps. This trait allows it to grow in nitrogen-deficient soils. It is one of only a few plants that are capable of such lightning-fast movements. The Venus flytrap grows up to 15 centimeters wide. The leaves are arranged in a rosette around an underground stem. The plant has four to seven leaves, each of which is a trap. The trap consists of two opposite-facing petals with spikes along the outer edges. The plant grows close to the ground, which allows insects to easily crawl into its traps. Its flowers are small, star-shaped, and are located at the ends of the stems. Inside each trap are small hairs that act as sensors. Touching the hair one time will have no result. But as the insect makes two consecutive touches on two different hairs, the trap closes in the blink of an eye. About 0.1 seconds. This complex mechanism is necessary to avoid idle activation of the trap when raindrops or other objects enter it. The exact principle of the trap is still not fully understood, but scientists believe it has something to do with the rapid transfer of water between plant cells. After the insect is trapped, the Venus flytrap releases digestive enzymes and digests its prey within two weeks. And then it opens again, waiting for the next victim. Each trap is capable of catching up to seven prey in its lifetime. Nepenthes. The Nepenthes traps are quite large, up to several tens of centimeters in length, although there are smaller ones as well. The traps look like jugs attached to the tips of the leaves. Each of them has a raised lid, which serves as a landing strip for its insect prey. The lids also protect the plant from rainwater. Insects are attracted to the smell that the Nepenthes produces. They crawl inside, but cannot climb the plant's smooth walls to get out. The liquid inside the jug acts as a gastric acid and allows for the digestion of the prey. It grows in Madagascar, India, and Southeast Asia. Biblis. This plant's unusual leaves produce a special sticky substance. If insects sit on the leaves, they get stuck. When this happens, the stem bends and the plant absorbs its prey. The long, thin leaves have sticky hairs and glands that secrete a special juice that helps dissolve and digest the prey. The largest representatives of this plant are capable of consuming frogs and snails. Biblis is a small shrub, usually up to 50 centimeters in height, with the exception of the giant Biblis, which can reach up to 70 centimeters in height. The leaves of the plant are long, rounded in cross-section and covered in numerous transparent hairs and glands. Inflorescences reach up to 8 centimeters in diameter. They are most often purple and pinkish in color, but can also be sometimes white. Biblis is native to North America, but today the plant can also be found in southern New Guinea and Western Australia. Darlingtonia californica This plant can be found in the swamps of Northern California and Oregon. The leaves, which also serve as traps, are yellow or red-orange in color. They are shaped like a cobra hood and can reach up to a meter in length. The trap gives off a pungent odor, which lures the insects inside. In this way, the plant is able to absorb critical nutrients. Mimosa pudica 
Plants can sometimes surprise us. Mimosa pudica, also known as the shame plant, for example, got its name because it folds its leaves at the slightest touch. This perennial plant is native to the tropical regions of South America, but due to its uniqueness, the shame plant became a popular ornamental plant around the world. Despite its outward harmlessness and even cowardly appearance, the plant is actually poisonous. The shame plant will fold its sensitive leaves not only at the slightest touch, but also at a light wind. One only needs to blow air in the plant's direction in order to see it react instantly. Why do the mimosa's leaves have such a unique property? And how does the mechanism itself work? The secret lies in the sensors inside the leaves. The sensors respond to pressure, causing the leaves to fold. At the base of the petiolus are water membranes. Once you touch the plant, the water inside the membrane immediately travels there. In this way, the lower part of the plant becomes flat and the top part of the petioles close. Desmodium gyrans. Another unique plant grows in tropical Asia. The Desmodium gyrans is striking not because of its appearance, but rather its ability to dance. It is a dancing flower that lives to rejoice in the sun's rays. Desmodium gyrans, also known as the telegraph plant, is a shrub that reaches 1.2 meters in height. It has oblong leaves resembling an ellipse. The plant's top leaves are slightly drooping and much larger than the ones on the sides. The flowers are small and clustered in racemus. In strong light, the side leaves begin rotating along a strictly defined trajectory. In 30 seconds, the side leaves complete an ellipse with their tips. Their movement is jerky, slightly resembling a message transmitted by Morse code. This is probably why the plant became known as a telegraph plant. Due to this unusual feature, Desmodium gyrans won over many gardeners around the world. What's interesting is that the plant sleeps at night. The leaves' movement stop completely until sunrise. Self-igniting cystus. This genus unites about two dozen species of evergreen shrubs. Its leaves and young stems are covered with a thick layer of granular hairs. The hairs not only serve as fluffy protection, but also release a resin, frankincense. The incense that the Christian church uses for worship, however, does not come from this plant. Instead, it comes from the incense tree, which grows mainly in Arabia. Yet the resin of the cystus has been used by people for perfumery and medicinal purposes since ancient times. It was discovered this century that the plant's leaves contain levels of polyphenols, a type of antioxidants, higher than in red wine and green tea, which is known for its antioxidant properties. The decorative shrub produces large flowers that live only for one day. The flowers are simple in shape, with five petals reminiscent of the rosehip flower. They are beautiful in the morning, but fall in the evening. This, however, does not affect the overall flowering of the shrub. New flowers keep blooming to replace the ones that have fallen. It is simply impossible to ignore the cystus sacrifice. The essential oils released by the leaves and stems can lead to the shrub's spontaneous combustion if the air temperature exceeds 32 degrees Celsius. As a result, the shrub turns to ash, fertilizing the soil and enabling new plants to grow in its place. You might wonder, how can new plants grow if everything has been burned? The cystus thought of this in advance. Its seeds are hidden in a hard shell that fire cannot damage. This is how new life sprouts out of the ashes. Such a sacrifice would be admirable if it was only the cystus bushes that burned in the fire. However, its innocent neighbors also get burnt. Sometimes the fire spreads across large areas. Friends, that's all for today. Like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.